Welcome to Sikorsky's Think Bouts, the show for customer service, customer experience, and technology. I'm Laura Sikorsky, and I'll be your host. Today with me is a little change of pen venue here. We have Corinne Caro, who is going to be interviewed instead of doing the interview. Yeah, so, Karen, I'm so excited to have you. Karen is the president of The Daily Blue of Blue Chip Marketing, Blue SEO, which is their website division, and many other businesses that are located at their offices. She's also extremely philanthropic. She is well known, uh, a giver, and uh, for that I'm so excited to have you on the reverse side. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah. It's a great opportunity for me to speak about what your topic, leadership, and and uh, making things great. Yeah, we thought today that we were going to talk about leadership, empowerment, and how they all lead to a great customer experience. Because no matter what you're doing in your office, leadership is extremely important. Certainly. The other thing that people forget is that how you are perceived is how you are received. And that's a very important, not only in the customer care industry, but just in general business practice. Because if you keep, uh, if people are just very loud and very et cetera, they're not going to be received well in their business environment. So we want to make sure that everyone understands that concept. Many times what we do is that we forget where we came from. Mm. We forget what it was like to be a line employee. I mean, I was a trainer, but I was also a reservation agent. So I knew a little bit about the starting up and being one of the line people. Yeah. And then you remember your first day. Do yeah. you remember your first day of when work? you had a- Oh, sure. Uh, and I think working for a variety of people has given me uh, as the years go on, I think of certain things like the first day and how that was. That's why when people come in here right away, we want them mm -hmm. to feel included, that this is a family work environment. Right. We're working together every day and we all pull weight to help each other. And I remember not really feeling that way. Like I was just there, I was an employee and how cold and, and, and it's lonely true. that is. I remember my first day, I won't, we, I won't tell you the company, I didn't have a desk, I didn't have a phone. And right. they just kind of said, well, sit here until somebody comes in. Yeah. Yeah. And that is very, very impressionable, and we want to make sure that we don't do that with our employees today. Sure. Um, do you enjoy getting up for work? Mm. I don't know. There's so many people out there, especially when I do some interviews with our call center agents, etc., and they just kind of look at me with this blank stare. Know, isn't it and funny? I'm like, my goodness, I I mean I don't have to go far to go to work. I just go down sure. to my office, but I still enjoy going to work. How sure. about yourself? I love going to work every day, but um, I have been around very people very close to me that their philosophy is you have to work. You don't get to choose what you want to do. You have to work. And what a sad existence that is, yeah. that you have to work. And I hate these companies that I own even. Mm -hmm. Wow, you hate them? Why would you hate them? This is like, you hate the people around you and you hate that you work in these companies. It's just, what? Yeah. Why? You know, get up and live and breathe and love that every right. day. And if or you don't like it, get out Get of it. out. The door's always open and don't yeah. let it hit you in the bum as you walk <laughs> out, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's, that is wonderful mm -hmm. to, to ask yourself out all the time. Do I really love what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Is it meaningful or is it fulfilling me? I mean... I, and then I, if you don't, you need to start thinking, okay, what can I do to make it better? Yeah. Okay, and there may be nothing. I don't know that. But you have yeah. to always give yourself options sure. when you're thinking about that. You know, Laura, I have a, a little tip on that. I will tell people to plan out their next 30 to 60 days on how they're going to do some mm -hmm. things that will make them or help them to get to what their plan is in the next five years. Mm -hmm. So spend the next six months or so or whatever mm -hmm. that plan is and just think about where you want to be in five years and start setting yourself up to get there. Absolutely. And I just love how Corinne always says, think about, because remember, that's our show. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use it more often. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other thing is for leadership. I always like the word tenets. You know, as some people don't know how to spell it or don't know what it means, but a tenet is a guiding principle. And I like to say that for leaders, you have to lead by example. And you have to motivate through empowerment. And what I mean by that is that's if there's something that an employee has to keep coming to you because you have the answers, you have to say, well, what can I do to get that employee knowledgeable enough so they don't have to ask sure. or they feel comfortable sure. with giving that to the customer? 
Now, many times, Laura, I think that people come from a place where they have to tiptoe around their bosses, making them do things that they didn't really want to do, mm -hmm. perhaps unethical even, or bullying sure. other employees. And then you set the tone for what you want in your workplace. Mm -hmm. So if you do not lead by example that you are happy, positive, motivated, you love the work that you're in, then the people around you really aren't. You, if you make people cry at work, that's a bad It's a real bad sign, yeah. <laughs> that is. And you love that? I mean, I know people that love and thrive on making people cry at work. It's and really that's crazy. It's crazy. Because it does, and, and, and just take it the next step further because that employee may have to pick up the telephone and it's a new customer. Is and that, then what, is that, what example does that set for your business as you're picking up that phone? Sure. And I always felt that if you're going to treat your employees like that, then there's a bigger chance that they're going to leave you flat, they're going to steal from you, mm -hmm. they're going to do things for you. And if you keep finding yourself in legal arrangements that people have stolen from you and people have hurt you, and you think about, okay, if I've been in business for 20 years, say, and how many employees out of, mm -hmm. ha out of it, hundreds even, how many are really with me a long time? Right. When you think about that, then and you, ha and you can mm -hmm. relate that, correlate that to what is my business doing and how effective is it and how effective is the environment that I'm in. And if you only have five employees out of hundreds that have been with you for 10 or 15 or 20 mm -hmm. years, there's a problem there with your leadership. Absolutely, absolutely. And you have or to, dictatorship. Or dictatorship, <laughs> could be, could be. Yeah. Um, the other great thing about a tenant, this tenant is to delegate responsibility. A lot of leaders forget that you have to groom people to be your successor. Yeah. You shouldn't be afraid that they're going to take your job exactly. or whatever. It's a sign that you're hiring the right people mm -hmm. and you're creating an environment for them to be happy, number one. Sure. A happy employee is a great employee. I agree. I think that teaching people to be great leaders, I often think of um, creating a legacy. So when you have mm -hmm. someone that can go off and do something else, but they remember things that you said or did for them, mm -hmm. Wow, I want to be a part of your growth in your life. And if you're here with an entrepreneurial spirit, I'm not going to hold you back mm -hmm. from that. Go ahead, bloom, blossom. I'll help you to get there. I want you to That's succeed. One hundred percent. I still remember one of my mentors to this day. You do. And you know, she had always explained to me when you're writing an email, it's not I this, I that, I that. Sure. It's we. Right. You're part of the team. Mm -hmm. And I will always, always remember that. Uh, and remember that you have to, how you're acting at home and work and even behind the camera, in front of the camera, whatever mm -hmm. it is, should really always be the same. You can't be, I mean, I read something about Hillary Clinton that said that she was one way in front of the camera and then to all the staff and the Secret Service and the people, she was another way. Yeah. And if you can't be the same way, there's something wrong something there too. Something is definitely wrong. And from the outside, you have to look at that person and say, wow, they can flick a switch like that and behave differently. I don't know how people do that. I'm Just the same all different. the time. Me too. You know, I'm Me always, too. I'm always happy. My husband doesn't understand why I'm always happy, but I am. You're I happy just, with life. I am. Why I not? enjoy it. Love I really it. do. No we stress. Some stress. Life, right? Absolutely. So why not make it great? And even when there's negativity and people are trying to hurt you or bring you down, get out of that. Again, set your next 30, 60, 90 day mm -hmm. plan. Get away from those people and live your life as happy as you can. That's turn, only going to... Right, turn the chapter, turn the, you know, just leadership. turn the page, and that'll be fine. Yeah. So, of course, and this was something we talked about in our first show, is recognize that your employees are your company's greatest asset. I mean, without I love them... That, Laura. Without them, we are all nothing in yeah. the scheme of things. What I love to say about that is that employees have to work together, again, like a mm -hmm. family. If I cook dinner, then you do the dishes, I'll help with homework, you help with homework... We're all part of things They're working, right. and if they know how important their job is, mm -hmm. not independently, but as a whole, then I think that right. that creates this teamwork. Right. It's just awesome. You're not on the you know baseball team, and if you're a pitcher, you need the you know you need the catcher. You need, you need the catcher. The, you need the guy at first base. You need everybody, and yeah. that's why the teamwork is indeed so much, so important. Yeah. But when you're a leader, these are some of the things that you should be. You should always be a mentor. Mm -hmm. Pick someone to, to help, to guide. Sure. Be a consistent listener. 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes employees just may want to come into your office and just talk. You know, you don't know what what they're thinking about, but obviously they took that step to come in and talk to you. Yeah. Um, you should always be self-motivated. And I bet I know you are self-motivated to the utmost. <laughs> just from what I know with 100 women, we're always, you know, it's like, okay, what do we do next? What do we have to do? Yeah, that's so, true. And I you have to that. be charisma charismatic, and you certainly are. If you don't, if you don't know Corinne, you have to be at a networking function with her because she just kind of goes, "Come here, you got to meet so and so. Come here, you got to meet so and so." And it's I do great. love doing that, and it is. And you know, there are some great leaders that are more introvert, uh, and they're not as charismatic. I and I wouldn't say that's not a great leader, but uh, certainly the leaders that have charisma are standing out. Yeah, and they're yeah. certainly the people that that just attract people around them. That that mm -hmm. want to be around them, that want to learn from them. And those people, I think, stand out. And there are great leaders that are a little bit more quiet. And they have a presence. When just they a walk presence. into a room, you just know there's something about that person that you want to you want to get to meet. Yeah. Um, but we also work well. See, I'm including myself as a, as a leader. Absolutely. Uh, You're an but, excellent leader. But we also work well independently. If we have to close the door and we have to get something going, and, you know, I'm working with some hospitals today. There, there's a lot of pressure in getting things done. Done. And I'm like, okay, just leave me alone. Let me just, you know, and so my husband knows when I'm in my office and my door is closed, that's kind of like, you know, that's a leave alone, Laura. Yeah, so, I love that. But again, respectful. Mm -hmm. Leaders always, always respect There's a, their employees. That's a huge thing. I and mean, if you're treating people like they are not as worthy as you, again, mm -hmm. if you're sitting in the king's or queen's quarters and really nobody can come to you, you're untouchable, right. and you pass people in the hallway and they're intimidated, that's really not a great leader. That's intimidating, it and that's is. not going to really get it you what is. you may have lots of wealth and people doing things for you, mm -hmm. but nobody's happy around you. No one's going to show up at your funeral. <laughs> right. Exactly. But I, one of the clients I had was out in Denver, and they were a credit card company. And every other week, the president of the company drove an ice cream cart into the call center. Really? And it was just, and so, but number one, he got to know all the employees. Oh, I love that. And word. it was a lot of fun. Everybody sure. got to eat the ice cream at their desk. They weren't supposed to eat at their desk, but Normally. the ice cream was okay. I love it. And so, but it makes them, makes that ivory tower real. Yeah. So I think that also is extremely Very important. important. But the other thing that a leader has to do is you have to create a new leader. Exactly. You know, we're not here all the time. So you have to look for employees that you want to mentor to become a leader. Sure. And what I've always done is I always look for an employee that asks questions. Sure. They want to learn more. They want to, what is it that's difficult in the job? And they say, could you tell me more about that? Because I'd like to learn how to do that. Sure. Um, and this one I love, but they listen. When you're speaking to them or you're at a meeting and you have a staff meeting and you're, they're not doodling. Mm -hmm. And I know when, a peop when somebody doodles, they're not paying attention. Their yeah. mind is somewhere else. So you have to kind of, lo I look for that in the yeah. employee. Um, and then when they make suggestions, you may not like the suggestion or you may not agree with it. But, you know, sometimes you just have to let the employee say, okay, we'll try it. Right. And if, Why it not? and if it works, super. Maybe you made a mistake. And if it doesn't work, they learned a very valuable lesson. Absolutely. I have had suggestions come from everybody, everyone here. And I, I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, I want them to feel included. And I want them to make executive decisions that can mm -hmm. help the company. Absolutely. Again, I have four kids. And my mo the most important thing that I need to do is be present for them. So I need our team to make mm -hmm. decisions and be mm -hmm. all of them leaders in their own way. So yes, we have uh, management and we have our line right. of who does what, right, right. but everybody has to make decisions. It's really important. And when people step up to the plate and say, hey, um, I want to make more decisions around here. I want, are you kidding? I'm not going to hold you back. Absolutely I not. love that. Absolutely not. And so it. they like they also to be part of task forces. I'm a great one for task forces. A oh, lot I of can't times, imagine. <laughs> I do. <laughs> a lot of people come up and they say, "Well, I want to do this," and yeah. I'll say, "Okay, well, pull two or three other people yeah. and get something done. Okay. Get something together." Yeah. And so I think 
you know, I think those are important things. I love it. I also, that last note that you said about being a mentor, um, I think that looking for employees that can mentor others gives them a, ta a chance for mm -hmm. you to sort of see that they can manage one or two or three people. Right. And if they can't, then you know they're not ready. That, but if they can mentor without getting anything extra, mm -hmm. mentor these people, make help their lives and help them get started right. in what you're already good at. I think that shows their leadership and I think it starts to bring out qualities that are important. Mm -hmm. And send them, you know, there are tons of seminars that if you see that one of your employees is just on the cusp, but they still don't have that management style or those management qualities, yeah. send them to a seminar. Number sure. one, to make them feel really good education that, you know, education is, is obviously. Excellent. I think a lot of leaders or business owners make the mistake of not uh, furthering the, their employees' education. Mm -hmm. And what a shame. Again, you're doing a great thing. You're you're building your own business. You're mm -hmm. putting into what they can bring value to here. Sure. You can't be afraid that they're going to use that outside. And in fact, you right. should hope that they do in their in their regular exactly. world. Exactly. And if they if they decide to leave because they've gained a skill, mm -hmm. that's okay too. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So let's talk a little bit about empowerment. Empowerment is your staff and the staff here at the Blue, all the Blues, yeah. um, they know so much about your customers. And in, in my industry, in customer care, they are the first line and they know everything. Customers, you know, they'll know if all of a sudden the shipments are, are, are getting damaged or whatever it may be. Put those staff in, in a room. And take a tenured employee and a senior employee and a, and a new line employee and ask them questions. Sure. You know, That's what are the customers idea. like about us? What do they dislike? That's mm -hmm. very telling, yeah. you know. And so I think I, I enjoy these, these I questions. Love that. Because the Because, number one, what happens is the employee gets excited because they're going, somebody's really asking me my they care. opinion. Sure, they care. Opinion. Yeah, I love that. So, That's so true. And on the reverse, sending out little cards that say we want to know and hear feedback from you an mm -hmm. email mm -hmm. or what i love to do is we do uh, an email twice a month that just says here are our spotlight clients and what they did that we feel great about and we all pull together and send that email out to say we love our clients and this is what they felt about us right now mm -hmm. and we switch that up every two weeks that's great yeah. that, 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 and stuff. again it just makes you feel good yeah. you know when you leave for the day this one is, and some, some managers, some leaders don't like to ask this mm. question, but if you, I always pose it, if you had a million dollars to give to your company, mm -hmm. what would you change? Mm. And it's really a very interesting question. Sure. You know, some people have said to me, I'd give free tickets to one of our, you know, one of our plays or one of our operas, right. or um, I wish... I could just get all new computers because right. our computers are so slow. And then I'll go, you have a problem with your computer network? Right. And it was like, you know, it's, I never would have found that out. If you don't ask If yourself. you don't, you know, if you don't see sure. that. So, For me, I always envisioned Blue Chip being sort of like a company like Facebook or Google where there's a lot of creativity and fun mm -hmm. and I would invest in things that, that incorporate that within the staff. So we do have a smart board and we have lots of fun and knick-knack things. We, I just brought a Mac here uh, to, to make sure that the staff has more fun tools to play to with play. to making great advertisements, great flyers, mm -hmm. great video. That, that's an investment in the company. But if I had anything to spend, it would be on the education and the surroundings Things to... to of the yeah, to allow everybody here who they have to be creative to just yeah. let that permeate through the world. And that's, that you know, <laughs> especially in the businesses here under the blue chip umbrella, they all are um, energizing businesses and you have to promote another business and you have to be creative. Yeah. It is entirely true. You have to be creative. So um, opinions make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, develop products. What could benefit? benefit our customers. And I, I don't like the word, how should we do this? Okay. I like, how might we fix okay. this? It's a little bit softer and you'll find that it, they're like, oh, how might I do this? Hmm. It's not what we should do, what we could do or what sure. we would do. Sure. It's how might we. Yeah. So, so what is empowerment? What does it all entail? Mm -hmm. And training, cross-training. Now, 
in the call center industry, customer care industry, training can be 12 weeks, three weeks, two weeks, depending on what it is that the companies are selling. Okay. But um, cross-training, you have to know the other person's job just in case. Right. If you're not here today, who's going to back you up? Very so cross-training is extremely important. And it could be in the contact center world. It could be that maybe today you're a voice telephone answering person. Right. But we need to train you about emails. Right. Or we need to tell you about web chat. Those are the types of things. So when you're looking at your staff, what is it that I should be training them on next? Outside sales, we talked about, and certainly product knowledge. Um, I worked for a utility at one point, and none of the staff in the call center ever went out on the truck to understand what it is on top of those poles and what does that mean. Mm. I worked for um, Air France doing their training program and they sold the Concorde, the staff, but they'd never been in it. Right. So they didn't understand when people called and said, I couldn't stand up, it was so tiny. So again, empower them with product knowledge. I also think everybody should know what you do all the way down to, even if they're interns, which we don't even call our interns interns. Mm -hmm. they, I think that that in itself right. almost sets them up for feeling like they are not valuable. So mm -hmm. even you know, with paid interns or the, the accredited interns right, from the colleges right. that we have agreements with, if they come in and they're called an intern and they're at a networking meeting and they say, I'm interning at Blue Chip, to me, right away, the person that they're talking to says, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't ask them anything. Yeah, because they're just an intern. And well, you're not empowering them yeah. to make decisions already with the company. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in our business with technology, the, the kids, quote unquote, know so much. Yeah. They know so much. So I feel that everybody should know about what you do. And again, to know the product knowledge and what we do is really important. If they can't even get into it in depth, like I can't tell what, what Rob, our camera guy, is doing and Mike, what they intricately know. Right. But I know what they do and I can sell that. I can talk about right. it. Right, because you understand right. what it is. It's important. And the minute you understand it, it's easier, flows off the tongue a lot better. Sure. So, you know, there are different levels, certainly, to satisfy uh, your customers on empowerment. They could be monetary, product, or service. Uh, I did some work for an automobile company in Chicago and the call center was the entry point for every job promotion. And they, the agents had, excuse me, the agents had up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars to satisfy a really? customer. Yeah, wow. and it had to do with insurance liabilities, et cetera, wow. on motor vehicles. That's interesting. Great, it was it was unbelievable. Career development, never underestimate the power of mm. enthusiasm because if if somebody is enthusiastic, grab it. You know, I love use that. it. I love that. Yeah, enthusiasm in your business is to me. It's key. It is. Again, and that, that goes all the way down to like, oh, I have to go to work. And why? Because mm -hmm. I have to deal with this person. Or my boss just isn't encouraging or caring. Right. Right. Or the atmosphere is, is really dirty or negative. Yeah, yeah. Or dark. Yeah, that's no fun, any of that. It is. It, it, it's just not. Well, we are almost at really? the end. I can't believe it. This, this went really fast today. I want to keep speaking about today. this. I love it. Was it was good. I was so excited that you agreed to uh, to come back and Thank you, but Laura. sit on the other side of the I love chair. It. It's fun. Um, just wanted, we have an Ask Laura segment, and just to spend two minutes, um, I got a question, and it was, how do you motivate a mm. senior employee? Great question. And it's like, what do you think about that? I mean, I would say they should become a mentor. They should become a trainer. Put them, pull in my industry, pull them off the floor. Have them work with the trainers or work with something else to do. Sure. But in, in your case, you pretty much have all young folks here. I do, but I, I see in, in the other businesses, some things get stale. Mm -hmm. And I see that people have been on a long time. And I, I feel kind of sitting down with them and finding out what are their talents and what would they love every day. So, okay, so you've been working here for 10 years. Um, you look like you're just coming to work, you're just doing your job. Mm -hmm. I look at that person and I feel sorry. Let's sit down and find out what yeah. you love to do in life. And let's create scenarios around mm -hmm. you that you can you can use your yeah. unique abilities to make your life better overall. Because if you're unhappy at work, you just, it just trickles just, down to your whole it, life. Exactly. And why live that way? Yeah. But I do know people who say, this is your job. If you don't like it, I'm going to get someone else to do it. 
too bad. And they don't care about fostering and building yeah, that. Yeah. This is your job, and I don't create your work environment for you. You know, I create your work environment for you, and you'll mm -hmm. do as I say, mm -hmm. or you don't have a job. And well, how unfortunate is that? That's not a great leader. That's a dictator again, and that's negativity. Absolutely. And that's, that's controlling. And mm -hmm. it's that, that if that's how you are at work, imagine how that person I is at home. at home. Exactly. So that all, to me, is you have something stale. You have someone who's a good person, mm -hmm. obviously a loyal, ethical, long-term employee. Let's figure out ways to enlist things that are going to make you happy, that are going to help you overall in your whole life. Absolutely. If you're going to spend most of your time at work, let's make this the best that it can you be for you. You want to be happy when you get up in the morning and go to work. And you want to yeah. be happy when you come home, not, you never believe this, I had this kind of problem right. today. I and had I, to do this and they made me do that and I really don't yeah. want to do that. So, well, that's great. Yeah. Well, listen, we're just about at the end. I just want to let you know that next show, uh, we're having a Michael Conti. Oh, Michael good. is uh, a call center technologist and we're going to talk about the trends of the future for 2015 really? and what that technology in the call center needs needs to be all about customer experience and how we can satisfy the customer. I love that. I can't wait so, for that show. Perfect. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me today. It I was to great. I'm it a little was bit great. sick still, but I'm so happy. I was going to bring tissues this time, but I didn't. I was okay. But <laughs> to was, all of really you, yeah, she time. had a very bad cold. But to everyone, thank you so much for clicking in, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye now.